A nuclear fission reactor generates electricity using the energy released during nuclear fission. Remember that nuclear fission is when a large nucleus absorbs a neutron and then breaks apart, releasing energy. So the reactor is used to convert the nuclear energy stored in atoms to electrical energy in the national grid. Here's a simple design of what a nuclear fission reactor could look like. Though you might also see this referred to just as a nuclear reactor or a fission reactor. It's a specifically designed environment that facilitates nuclear fission reactions and harnesses the heat released by them. In an exam, you should be aware of the different components of the reactor. We have the fuel rods in the middle, which is where the reactions will take place. Then the reactor is filled with a coolant, usually water or a gas that the fuel rods can be submerged in. We also have these control rods that can be lowered into the reactor. These are different to the fuel rods as they are instead used to control the rate of reaction. But we'll learn more about this elsewhere. For now, we'll focus on the roles of the fuel rods and the coolant, starting with what reactant the fuel rods are made from. The reactors use fuel rods made from enriched uranium. Here's what one of these fuel rods may look like. We use this long, thin shape since it has a large surface area, making it easy to absorb neutrons to start the fission reactions. But what do we mean by enriched uranium? Well, what we do is combine different isotopes of uranium in a certain proportion. For example, most fuel rods are made with 97% uranium-238 and 3% uranium-235. You won't be expected to remember these isotopes or proportions for an exam, though. So here, the uranium-238 is not fissile, meaning we can't easily make it undergo fission by having it absorb a neutron. On the other hand, uranium-235 is very fissile and is easy to break up with fission. You might be surprised at how few of the atoms in the rod will actually undergo fission, but this makes the rate of fission much more manageable. So what actually happens during these reactions in the reactor? Well, the fuel rods are arranged so that the neutrons released by one rod are absorbed by a neighbouring rod. Remember that fission reactions tend to release neutrons, which can be absorbed by other nuclei to undergo fission and release more neutrons, causing a chain reaction. In the reactor, we only want to manually induce one fission reaction and then let the rest of the energy be produced through chain reactions. So we arrange the rods like this so that the neutrons released during fission can move between the rods. This means that each fission reaction in one rod will then cause a chain reaction in a different rod. This is another reason why the rods are long and thin, since we want to minimise the number of times a neutron is absorbed by a nucleus in the same rod. Many fuel rods are also hollowed out to help with this. But how do we then harness the energy from these reactions? Well, the energy released by the fission reactions in the fuel rods heats a coolant pumped into the reactor, where, remember, the coolant is the water or gas that fills the reactor. So we pump in cold coolant that is able to absorb a lot of energy. Then the fuel rods will release energy as heat, since gamma waves are emitted during the fission reactions. These will be absorbed by the coolant to warm it up. The coolant also gets warmer since some of the nuclei released during the reaction will collide with atoms in the coolant. This means we can then pump this hot coolant, which has collected the energy from the fission, out of the reactor. This can go on to spin turbines to generate electricity. But you don't need to explain this part in an exam. The main things you need to know 
are how the reactor facilitates fission reactions and how we collect the energy released with the coolant. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.